I'm out with my daughter today, and we are going to be doing some sea trials with the CPT autopilot. Uh, the Dodger's up, which makes it a little difficult to see, but just so you can tell, there's the CPT unit, there's the control head, she is in standby. I do not have it on yet, so I'm just going to come out of the channel. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my fenders. What's going on, people? Man, well, it's been a long, long winter. So you guys remember, last year I bought my first boat, SV Artemis. 1985 Catalina 30 tall rig. It's been a long, long winter with a lot of boat projects, but man, did we have some fun. Anyway, it's time to start enjoying the water. Now, don't worry, we're not going to lose focus on this channel. I just want to tell you that it's time for season three, time to start moving forward with a lot more fun on the water. But we do still have a ton of boat projects coming at you. So if you're new to sailing or want to just follow me on my adventures, I implore you to smash that like and subscribe. And man, I hope you guys really enjoy these videos. Greetings. So today I'm going to be installing, or at least partially installing, my CPT autopilot. If you guys look up here, um, you can find the video for the measuring. Not that bad if you're interested in the CPT. I know at first I was a little hesitant and nervous about the, the measuring aspect, but really not that difficult. So again, you can see that video right there, um, or just click back two videos from now. I think it was episode 39, or maybe 40. Um, either way, it's going to be getting installed. He's leaving the marina. So, I think most important thing you need to have is a Coors Light. Uh, for this project. It's imperative that you have some sort of cocktail. It doesn't have to be a Coors Light, but you're going to want something good. Second thing, second, I also shortened my shifter. If you recall, in the last one, when I would go into reverse, it was up to here. So I took two inches off the shifter, and now um, I'm able to go ahead and install. So today we're going to be installing it. I don't know if I'm going to be doing the electrical because we have a meeting here at the club tonight. I just want to get the basics put on and then in the morning or a little bit later on this evening, I can run the one wire, an entire one wire. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm going to probably tie it in to the back of the binnacle somewhere and then I can drop it down. I have a hatch underneath, which you've seen if you watch my videos, there's a hatch uh, where you can get to all your steering drop down through there and then bring it around to the uh, the power. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Any questions, comments, or concerns through this video, by all means, put them down below in the comments and I will respond. Um, if you have something more detailed you need, the Sailing Project Artemis on Facebook, DM me on there and I'll, uh, I'll absolutely get back in touch with you. But yeah, this system seems pretty rad and I'm stoked to be installing it. So here we go. All right, so here's the box. Uh, if you get this box, you should probably read this. It says, attention recipient, open the package as soon as receiving and remove the control box and store away from any other things that are magnetized. Um, I just got this like 10 minutes ago, so I figured five minutes in my trunk, not near anything metal, is perfectly fine to get down to the marina. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and open it and see what's inside. Super excited for this. Um, I've wanted this thing for a long time. And this year just happened to be my, well, I've only had the boat a year, but it turned out to be my time to get it. All right, so what do we have? We have packing peanuts. Oh, dear. Uh, I'm going to go get a bag to put these in because I don't want them getting into the water. So I will be right back. All those trusty trips to the, uh, the deli, I always save these on the boat. And now I know why. Packing peanuts are awesome, but I just don't want to contribute to any of this getting into the water. Uh, right now the bunker are running like crazy and we don't want to get anyone sick so let me get this cleaned out and we'll be right back peanuts removed so we have our wheel with the belt the packing list the invoice the measurements and a cool little what's in here Let's see, little thing. So this is read before installing. This is autopilot, this is the warranty and the operation manual. So I'm gonna go ahead and read those things. 
and then we can go through the rest. Well, before I install, we'll open it up and then I'll I'll go through and read all that. So this aside for now. Then we have another box inside of a box. What's in the box? What movie is that from? Tell me in the comments below what movie What's in the Box is from. All right, so we got another box here. Again, I'm always careful when I open these. I see more peanuts. I'm gonna have to go get my bag again. So, all right, so this is our, what comes with a compass so we can see where the magnets, the magnetized area could be causing issues. All right, I need to go get my bag again. Be right back. All right, so the rest of those packing peanuts, there's still some in here, but whatever. So this looks to be, yep, this is the control head. And just for good measure, take a quick gander. Yep, so there's our control head. Um, I mean, if you know CPT, if you've seen pictures, you don't need to get too much of a look at it. There's one wire there. This looks to be like our pedestal mounting bracket. I'm not gonna open this up until I'm ready to install. And then, yep, here is, don't want to drop these peanuts. Again, you might want to open this at home uh, if you don't want to get these little peanuts in the water. I'm being super careful with these right now. But So this is the, uh, the power head that will be mounted at the bottom of the pedestal uh, with the clutch on the back. So all in all, that's all the parts. And again, one wire. And <laughs> you can't beat this. Let me clean this up a little bit and then we'll get back and we can talk about these components a little bit. Okay, so again, um, this is our power head. This is what sits at the bottom of the binnacle. This is the actual brain or controller. This will sit somewhere up here. Components in here are for mounting the, uh, both these, these uh, assets. Uh, the big one is going to be going around bottom of the pedestal um, and then we use hose clamps and then again this is for the wheel so I'm gonna go ahead and read these instructions real quick and then I will be right back and we will start installing all right so this this is the installation guide um, for the boat and again this is set specifically to your boat um, when you order one of these you'll take measurements yada yada so, first things first, it wants me to mount the wheel pulley on my boat, on the steering wheel. So I'm gonna get started on that, and then I'm gonna do the bracket. And uh, yeah, this is all pretty exciting. So let's, uh, let's do it. Correction, this is the installation manual. So we are gonna do it. So first things first, we're gonna mount the uh, the pulley to the wheel. So we gotta take the wheel off, and um, yeah, we'll go for it. Now, one thing I do see when this is being installed on the, the few videos that are out there is everyone gets the bracket wrong the first time and then has to redo it. So I'm gonna try not to do that today. So right off the bat here it says, the thicker rim against the spokes. So let me go get the pulley, and I'm gonna find a thicker rim, and I'm gonna get to it. So let's go put the belt to the side, and here is the pulley. So right off the bat, it says the thicker rim, uh, blah, blah, blah. place the wheel pulley in the thicker rim against the spokes. So we know that this side is going to be against the spokes. And where is my knife? I'm going to be going to take this piece. I'm going to leave it actually until it's on. Thicker rim against the spokes wheel off we know that's the back because I just pulled it off thicker side against the spokes and now we need to get the J bolts and we should just be mounting this straight on there like that put the knife away so we don't cut the cushions all right so we get this little kit it's got the J bolts and the hardware I have a knife but yet I'm using my teeth so I'm just going to take the J bolts out. I'm going to put them on top of this little manual thing. 
that way I don't have anything get lost. And now I guess I should just use my knife, which I put here to get the nuts. I don't want to lose anything. The boats are endless, uh, endless pits of uh, disparity when it comes to nuts and bolts and hardware. So I'm going to use my little drill thing here and I'm just going to pour all that into there so I don't lose anything. And now we're going to go ahead and run the uh, J bolts through. And we're just going to go ahead and look. There's one. And I'll throw a washer and a nut. And I can tell you right off the bat here, I am absolutely going to have to uh, trim these. So one. Two. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. The nylon lock washers, which is good. And don't worry about centering yourself right off the bat because you're going to have to tighten this all down and then it will center itself, right? Because it's centrifugal. At least that's the way I'm thinking it's going to work. All right, I'm not going to keep this going. I don't want this video to be nine hours long. So I will show you once I am done and tightening these up, or I got some B-roll going too, so that ought to help with the, uh, the stuff. Also, you want to keep the bolts going the same direction just for a nice look, I think. That's just me. J's, anyhow. Don't let them uh, be all nasty and all over the place. That would, just, that would be unkind to your boat. Don't be unkind to your boat. So a little, little fun fact there, you're going to want to have a fairly deep socket to get these on because they are a little, uh, oh they're, they're deep, they're pretty solid J bolts. So definitely get a, uh, a deeper socket before you attempt anything. I was just playing with my little dollar store kit and it wasn't cutting it so thank god the old owner left me a ton of stuff in this boat and now we're good we're good we are good it's also blowing like crazy out here right now and uh yeah pretty nutty so once you get these all tightened down she self-centers and we're just going to go ahead and use a measuring tape to verify that but um it has to self center, right? Because it's circle going on a circle. Which is, I guess, I guess I could be wrong. But seems legit to me. So, thick side on the bottom, closest to the spokes, J bolts on. And um, yeah, that's pretty simple. Not, nothing too difficult there. So, once you get that done, we'll get, I think, uh, the pedestal mount now goes on, and then we can move on from there. Uh, but I'm going to read the instructions because that's what you should do. FYI, it was an 11 millimeter, not a 10. What is this world coming to? Right, just because I'm a little bit of a freak, um, I want to check to make sure now that the wheel has the bracket on it with the screws sticking out that I can still turn the pedestal with these out and I can so that's good again I um, I brought this it's not the correct one the guy just put it on before me I'm assuming it should have looked like this but I brought this over to my welder friend and uh, we had two inches taken off it and it re -tacked. so this is how it should look it does come with these caps I'm gonna put the caps on now and then I'm gonna take it back off and I'm gonna mount the um, power the power head to the pedestal so these are the black caps keep these from catching on anything and just a good look I highly recommend you use them because why wouldn't you you just paid good money for the system to make it look as good as possible although I do like stainless I think these look pretty swell yes I just said swell 
the hell's wrong with me? Gosh, Brian. The wheel's done. We have all these little things on there. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna cut that off. I don't like that. That's gonna bother the hell out of me. So that's gone. And I'll pick that trash up. So this is all done. I've measured each spoke. We are the same um, all around. We're good to go. So I also used a ruler, not just a knife. And that's what it'll look like from the front. Not too shabby. And from the back, not too shabby. But just remember, the thick side goes closest to the spokes. All right, let me go read the next portion, and then we're going to go ahead and put this to the side. And then probably, if I'm correct, we're installing the power head. All right, so next, what we want to do is we want to mount the um, power head to our bracket. So what you're going to want to do is there's a screw on the back here. Again, boat, you will lose everything. Find a tray. I'm going to take this screw out. And then here is our bracket, right? It says, do not remove this. This side up. Up. It fits on uh, just like this. So there's, there's two keyways. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this piece to our bracket here. And if you look at it, they made it so simple because everything is custom. There's four holes. There's four holes. This is the side that's going to be up. All right, so we're going to be down here, which you can't see, but I have another camera going. So now we're just going to go ahead and use the hardware provided, and we're going to go ahead and put this onto here. There are also nylon uh, locking nuts, which is nice. I still would say every now and again you should come out and uh, just make sure everything's nice and tight. Don't over tighten the J bolts, by the way. Read the instructions. I don't know if I said that earlier. Um, it blatantly says in there, get it till they start to turn, and then give it a quarter turn after that. So I, can, I can't say it enough. Reading these instructions is super, super key. All right, that's done. All right, so after that's done, now it wants you to put this back together. And. I just want to verify that I have this in the right spot. Yes, it says I do. So a thumb screw and a washer. Go on this side. Put that back together. And then if I read the pull, it says it wants me to keep it. Uh, mount the motor box on a little bit. Lock the clamping lever when the slotted bracket is in the middle of its adjustment range. So the middle of my adjustment range would be shoot, right there. And that's a good way to lock it. Just take it and whoops, a little tight. Loosen it a tad. Put it up. And now it's locked in and that's gonna sit right there. So I changed my mind. I don't want to be a slob and these make a lot of sense. So they're really easy to do if you decide to use them. Loosen it. Don't go through where anything bites. Go right below it. Place it on. I always like to stick it in so it's, uh, you know, there. And then just pull and press. This will save your pedestal, especially the cool thing about this, guys, if you buy one of these, is you don't have to, I mean, you'd probably have to call CPT back eventually, but you, you could technically sell your boat, keep your autopilot. There's no holes really being drilled. I'm putting one in the, in the pedestal here, but that's nothing. I mean, damn, you know, this is a lifetime type of unit, so... Just do it right so you're not scratching up anything. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. So get it to the point where you want it, take your knife, and then just uh, cut it. And you're done. Bam! So now it is protected. Now, I'm gonna put it through. So I'm gonna do the next one. You don't need to watch that, but now when it goes around the pedestal, 
it won't scratch the hell out of it and it'll look nice when I go and take this off and I sell the boat. That's right, if you ever buy my boat, you're not getting this unless you pay for it. All right, so I actually removed this from this to mount it. I was scratching everything up. Um, I think I'll go wipe off, but yeah, I was making a mess. So I took that off and it was just a lot easier to do. I also used a much longer screwdriver than I was using and a uh, 9 16 to tighten that. But so far that was the biggest pain in the ass. All right, so next, that's a different, uh, that's a drop down plate. So next what it wants me to do is to basically um, get the belt on. So here's the belt and the steering wheel on and then make the final uh, measurements there. So let me get on to that. Well, all right, so besides the fact that I have um, like a ton of no space right here, got it done, I did scratch up my pedestal a little bit, but it, it's coming right off. So then you hang it, you get the bracket on there and then you just gotta do your tensioning. Um, you would use this lever to give it more or less, right? You could bring it up and make it less, or you can bring it down, just let it hang and do, it's about that tight. And then she turns, perfect. And then again, if you wanted to use it, you would just engage the clutch. And now you see I'm locked, I can't use it. So this would be now when it steers. So I just wanna, I'm gonna read the tensioning um, guide for this, see where they should be. But for right now, that's it. Again, you don't want to use it. Pull that out, and now you got free wheel on your uh, on your rudder there. So that part's easy. It is super windy. Um, you're gonna want to have a long screwdriver when you're trying to tighten these. So just keep that in mind. But all in all, super super simple. Again, if I wasn't trying to film, I think I could have done this a lot faster. So there's the wires I still have to do, and now I need to mount the control head. But first I have to do some magnet stuff to see where I can mount it. And these are the brackets. So let me get working on that now. So the other thing we want to do here is, is check for magnetic deviation. Um, so I really want to place my control head right here. But you know, as I look, and this is just doing some fun stuff. We got no interference, no interference. I'm looking at north here. No interference. A little bit of interference as we come right here. And I'm holding, let's see, this right there. I'm holding true. Oop, we're getting a little deviation here. See that? A little deviation. A little deviation. So I'm going to put it right here. Where I should be holding. Yeah, very good. I mean, I'm bouncing around on the boat right now, but that's, uh, that's pretty good. So right where I want it, it's going to work. No deviation. Yeah. All right, if you choose to use the pipe mount, Sorry. When you look at this bracket, picture it like this. That's how it works. One hole to one hole. Or one hole to one hole, if you can see that. So it's pretty, uh, you think you got to drill holes and you're like, ah, oh, no, it's just a puzzle. So this is where I'm going to mount it. I check the deviation there. I'm not moving. And that's also as high as I can come off of this without not really going far from there. Man, the sun's actually getting pretty strong out here today. So all in all, to do the hard mounting of this unit, I would say you're looking at a solid hour. Um, my next time doing one of these, yeah, I think I could do it in 30 minutes. I took a lot of time filming today, um, which really slowed me down as well. But uh, let's look here. I, I changed my mind. I actually like it down here a little better. A, now we're totally clear of the compass. Even though I had no deviation, I just didn't really like how it looked up there. Down here, it's sort of hidden away. I can still turn it, keep it straight, or I can county, uh, counter it off a little bit, and I kind of like it. Reach whatever I need to reach. Again, if I'm going to hold heading, if I'm going to tack, which would be like this, um, put it on standby. The clutch is good. She's holding nice and steady. Yes, there's supposed to be some wiggle. When it's disengaged, we're turning good. I have no travel on the belt, which is also nice. So that means that we have it set up correctly. Um, all in all, very easy. I do have to still run my 12 volt, but I have a meeting here in a little bit. I'm not quite sure where I wanna put the hole yet either. So I'm gonna go underneath and just see. But super simple to put this on. I mean, if I were to have to take this off, it would take me you know, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, 11 or 12 bolts and she's done she's off the boat so yeah this spring's pretty cool um i know there's a bunch of videos on it so i'm not going to sit here forever but now you've seen me measure you've seen me somewhat install and uh now you'll get to see me use it but the beautiful thing here is i should now be able to uh single hand the boat and the kids don't have to steer no one has to get upset just much easier so yeah, I'm pretty stoked, but I just want to run the magnet over this one more time with the shifter down to make sure that I'm not causing any interference with this bad boy. I think we should be good. Um, I like where it is now. Again, much better than I had it up here. And then I just got to do some cleanup and we're done. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, I'll show you the 12 volt. Uh, really? No, I won't. There's no point. I'm going to drill a hole. I'm going to pull the wire through. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to connect it to my, my system. I'm probably going to put it onto my refrigerator. Uh, breaker because we don't have a refrigerator on here Pretty simple if you need to watch someone drill holes. I don't know. I'm not making fun of you, but I shouldn't have said that if you need me to drill a hole for you I'll drill a hole but in wood. I'm not gonna do it on the boat I'm just gonna get that done in the morning and then try to get uh, my dinghy day done which should be fun But all right, let me uh, start cleaning up here What is up good world? So, I'm out with my daughter today, and we are going to be doing some sea trials with the CPT Autopilot. Um, the Dodger's up, which makes it a little difficult to see, but just so you can tell, there's the CPT unit, there's the control head, she is in standby. I do not have it on yet, so I'm just going to come out of the channel. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my fenders, and then hopefully we can get you a couple of good angles from there, and see how she works. But uh, yeah, pretty excited, and... Um, yeah, hope you enjoy. If you any questions about this unit, feel free to ask me. I don't know anything about the other units other than my friends have them, and they seem happy with them. They just, uh, again, wanted a very simplistic unit that I could move from uh, boat to boat in case I ever get another boat. And I just don't feel like throwing away $1,300 is really worth it. So I spent a little bit more money, and now I can move this unit to really whatever boat I want to be on. Even if I was going to go rent a boat in the Caribbean, I could actually take this unit down with me just to install temporarily. So anyway, hope you enjoy and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. All right, so we're doing about four and a half knots right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into heading hold and see if she holds a heading under motor. We're waiting a little bit for the wind to pick up. So let me show you how you go into a heading hold on this particular unit. All right, so first thing you got to do is push in the clutch and then switch up the heading hold. We are now on a heading hold. You can see we got a green light going. The clutch is in. I have, oh, starting to do it. I want to watch my compass. At 140. Coming off 140 a little bit. Let's see if she goes back. She seems to be turning. Coming back. She is turning. So now what I can do is bring the rudder up to five, the dead band to five, and we're going to see how that one works. She's absolutely steering, and it's holding us right around the mark. We're, we're rolling on autopilot right now. Alright. It's working. Is it doing the right thing? Yeah, it's keeping us basically right where we need to be. I think I'm going to bring this down to a 4. And I'm going to turn the rudder up to a 6. It's overcorrecting now. Let's bring it down to a three. But it's holding us right in the, the general range of where we want it to be. Okay, people, I'm going to go ahead and play with dead band. I'm also going to pull out the manual and just go back over dead band and rudder settings. Um, we are staying within 
five degrees of our heading, so I am not mad at this at all. Yeah, very good. Visitors. <laughs> all right, well, so far so good. She's been holding us exactly where I'm putting it. But I do want to try the tack feature, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the boat using just the autopilot. How we initiate this is we hold down both for five seconds. And now we should be into a tack. I have the tack set for just under 100 degrees, but I could be wrong on that. I haven't really read the manual yet. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. That is amazing. Very happy with that. Yeah, that was pretty damn good. All right, so we now we know the tech feature works. Um, I'm now gonna bring her completely that direction by hitting down 10 degrees, plus 10 degrees. Probably gonna have to hit it a few times. I think I might be able to tap that button twice for 20. I just need to read that. I'm not sure. But I'm gonna do another 10. Another 10. Quiet as a mouse. And uh, I'm absolutely stoked with it. It's weird now having my leg here, not doing a damn thing. And uh, feeling the rudder move. Super strange, but yeah, this has definitely made this boat a lot more enjoyable so far. I think I'll be able to come out by myself now, no issue. Um, just whenever I want, being able to do all my winches and everything, and um, yeah, being able to actually single hand the boat. It's gonna be kind of neat. So we'll see, but I'm gonna keep playing with it. So we were gonna attempt to see how she worked under sail, but as you can tell, there's no wind. I keep trying to come over 10 more degrees, see if we can't catch a little something, but there's just nothing. It's all off the nose. Nose. We're just making our own. But either way, I had to refurl that today, so I'm not mad, but it would've been cool. What I think I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna take the boat back to the dock, say good riddance for the day, and take little Miss Sunshine here out in the dink for a rip across the river. You wanna do that? You wanna go rip across the river? All right, so that's, you don't need a bathing suit. No bathing suits needed. We're not going to get wet. All right, so I'm going to go furl in my head sail. I'm going to have this autopilot take me back to the marina. I'll tell you what I think about this. Um, hopefully this week, I may want to try to sail it. But for right now, um, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. I mean, I've never had a system before. But uh, what a joy. I mean, I was able to sit on my pedestals and uh, drink a seltzer and sort of just enjoy myself for um, the entire time we've been out here except for filming and playing with this, but yeah, not bad, not bad. CPT, you make a rad product. Um, I don't work for the company, I'm not at all affiliated. I just wanted a really robust system and I didn't need bells and whistles. I just wanted something that would always work and use no power. Also, uh, this is where I drilled through and being, being the butcher that I am, all I wound up doing with this was basically running down the pedestal into the aft cabin under the cushions right to the uh, the battery with another 10 amp breaker that we put in so we put in two another 10 amp breaker on a switch right to the battery super simple now when i want to take this out all i gotta do is pull one wire out i don't have to worry about it being crisscrossed all throughout the boat it's just right there so um all right cool let me put you guys down take this head sail back in and get her on the dink talk to you guys later